Hello friends, welcome to another important topic from exam point of view that is peritonsillar abscess. So we will understand first of all about the peritonsillar space, then we will go in brief about the peritonsillar abscess. So let's start. So peritonsillar space can be defined as area of loose connective tissue between the fibrous capsule of palatine tonsil medially and superior constrictal muscle laterally. So in the coming slides, whenever we will say just tonsil, uh, it will mean that we are discussing about the palatine tonsil only. Okay, so this will be understood. So how the abscess develops because the pus follows the path of least resistance. We will understand it further. What are the boundaries of peritonsillar space? Medially, it is bounded by the capsule of tonsil. Literally, there is a muscle that is superior constrictor muscle, which we have also studied in the tonsillar bed. Superiorly, there will be anterior tonsillar pillar and inferiorly, there will be posterior tonsillar pillar. So this will be the boundary of peritonsillar space. Here we can see in this handmade rough diagram of the peritonsillar space, there is a, a tissue that is marked in red that is tonsil and on its lateral side there is a greenish structure uh, that is forming the lateral boundary that is superior constrictor muscle. In between the superior constrictor muscle and the capsule of the tonsil, capsule is marked by the yellow color if you can see. So the space between the yellow color and the uh, structure which is marked in green that is pointed by the whitish dots. So that area is the peritonsillar space. It is the space between the fibrous capsule of the tonsil and the superior constrictor muscle. So this is just an indicative diagram to give you guys an, an idea of the peritonsillar space. Now coming to the peritonsillar abscess, which is also known as Quincy. So how the abscess develops? There will be first of all uh, cellulitis, which will happen uh, if the cellulitis stage is ignored. Uh, it means that patient is not treated educate, adequately, then it will land up into the abscess. What can be the etiology of the peritonsillar abscess? It is very important also. So most common cause will be recurrent acute tonsillitis or if there is any persistent penetrating foreign body into the soft palate or tonsillar pillar or the tonsil itself. Uh, there can also be infectious mono mononucleosis, uh, very poor oral hygiene or dental infections. And also it is more common in the age group of 20 to 40 years and if we see the gender uh, predisposition, there will be uh, more uh, incidence in males as compared to the females. So here it is another handmade diagram of the peritonsillar abscess. Uh, here we can see in this diagram, there are whitish serrations which are made. So that indicates the upper and lower jaw. And here we can also see the uvula which is deviated to the healthier side. And the uh, block which is marked from the red color, dark red color, that indicates the peritonsillar abscess. So it is uh, pushing the uvula towards the healthier side also. And tonsils are barely visible on the affected side. So what can be the incision site uh, for drain drainage of this abscess? So how we can mark the incision site? So we have to uh, give the incision at the meeting point of the two lines. That is one is horizontal line and another is vertical line. How these lines are drawn? Horizontal line is will be drawn from the base of the uvula and vertical line will be drawn from the anterior pillar. So whenever uh, these two lines will meet, that will be the site of incision or we can say that will be, that will be the most fluctuant site for aspiration of this abscess. So here in this image, the part which is marked with dark red color, that part indicates the peritonsillar abscess area. Now coming to the causative organism responsible for the peritonsillar abscess, most common is beta hemolytic streptococci and uh, there are few anaerobic organisms also such as fusobacterium. What will be the symptoms? Patient will present with odinophagia, hot potato voice, there will be throat pain and there will be restricted painful neck movement because of the muscle spasm. Now coming to the signs visible on the clinical examination, patient will have classical toxic look and there will be fever and head will be turned slightly towards the affected side. There will be severe trismus that will happen because of the pterygoid muscle. It is said commonly that if there is no trismus, it is unlikely to be the peritonsillar abscess or Quincy. It is that much characteristic of this disease. 
so there will be severe trismus patient will have drooling of saliva patient will have foul breath that is also known as halitosis and there will be swollen anterior pillar with marked congestion uvula will be debited towards the healthy side as we have already seen in the handmade diagram there will be bulging of soft palate and so tonsil will be pushed medially so these all are the signs that will be visible in the case of peritonsillar abscess now coming to a Quincy triad. So what is Quincy triad? It is made up of three things. Uh, first is uvular deviation towards the healthy side as we have already seen previously. There will be trismus and there will be enlarged jugulodigastric lymph node of the same side on which side the abscess is present. Now coming to the differential diagnosis, uh, how uh, and from which conditions we can differentiate uh, this uh, peritonsillar abscess. So these are the parapharyngeal abscess, infectious mononucleosis, pseudoaneurysm of internal carotid artery and certain neoplasm uh, out of which the tonsillar lymphoma is most common. So these are the few differentials of this disease. Coming to the treatment part, uh, it can be divided again into two categories, medical management and surgical management. First of all, we will see medical management. So uh, we have to give IV antibiotics as it is an infective condition. So preferably we will give second generation cephalosporin. Also we can give clindamycin also. And for anaerobic coverage we will give uh, metronidazole. Patient will have fever and severe pain. So we can give intramuscular diclofenac injection which has to be avoided in case of asthmatic patients. In asthmatic patients we can give estaminophen. Also we can give uh, dexamethasone injection uh, single shot to suppress the inflammation. Oral gargle uh, should be advised to patient for maintenance of oral uh, hygiene. Uh, IV fluids should be advised as patient's oral intake will be uh, very less. So to avoid dehydration and many other complications, we have to give IV fluids to the patient and liquid to semi-solid diet can also be advised depending on the condition uh, uh, as patient is able to take the food orally or not. So based on that, we will have to look into the diet of the patient also. Coming to the surgical management, if patient is not improved by the medical treatment, so we can also do aspiration uh, of the abscess by a simple uh, needle, uh, 16 gauge needle we can use for the aspiration and we can also do incision and drainage. Site of incision, I have already told you guys that what will be the site of incision. So uh, advantage of incision and drainage uh, is that it removes the pus from the infection site and it also allows the better perfusion of antibiotics which we are giving intravenously. So and also it provides more oxygenation to the infected tissue. So infection gets controlled very rapidly by the incision and drainage of the pus. So uh, incision uh, has to be given at the meeting point of horizontal line which will be line drawn from the base of uvula and vertical line which will be drawn from the anterior pillar. We have already told you. So also uh, we can do hot tonsillectomy or cold tonsillectomy in case of if there is uh, multiple times or, or recurrence of the uh, uh, peritonsillar abscess. So we can also do tonsillectomy. So coming to the complications of peritonsillar abscess, if not treated properly, it may lead to the airway obstruction that will happen due to rupture of the abscess. And there can also be aspiration pneumonitis and parapharyngeal abscess due to spreading of the uh, pus. And there can also be mediastinitis, which will be managed with appropriate antibiotics and mediastinal drainage. There can also be thrombosis of internal jugular vein and patient may land up eventually into the septicemia also. So that was all about the peritonsillar space and uh, peritonsillar tonsillar abscess which is also known as Quincy. Now you guys will tell me in the comment section that what is the cause of displacement of the uvula towards the healthy side? Why it gets displaced towards the healthy side? So follow us for more such contents. Thank you very much.